Hi, I'm Graeme Lamin. I'm a founding member of the Macedon Rangers and District Motor Club. With me today is Bob Jones, and Bob has a car that is probably unique amongst all the cars in this club, and we've got a huge variety of cars, but Bob, I think it's safe to say yours is the only one quite like this. Thanks, Graeme. Yes, yeah. it would be. So tell us, tell us what your car is. It's a 1935 Lincoln LeBaron Coupe. And uh, fairly rare, I would imagine? Uh, yes. Uh, in total, I built 23 of them, and they produced in America four right hand drives for market overseas. And were all four sold to Australia? I don't, I don't know where the other three were sold to, but this one was sold to a man in uh, Simons of Sydney who was a director of a company up there. He bought this one, the 1935 coupe, and he also purchased the limousine of 1936. And you know what happened to the limousine? Any idea? The limousine is tied up in a, in a garage in Sydney uh, from a couple who are uh, separating and the bloke doesn't want to take it out of the garage in case his ex-wife gets hold of some funds, I imagine but it's collecting a lot of dust. Oh well, yours is out in the road and yours gets plenty of use. I've seen your car at many events. You're not scared to drive it? No, I'm not scared to drive it. I just get a bit laxed. I should take it out more than I do, but there well, we are. If you need someone to come and drive it for you, I'm happy to come around and, and take it for a spin. More than happy. If you had a skirt on, probably I would. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Bob, how long have you had this car? Um, It'll be coming up 38 years. Yeah, are you thinking of keeping it? Uh, there'll come a time when I will sell it, yes. Mm. So since you've had it, what have you done to it? Well, when I bought it, it was in a bit of a sad state. It, uh, electrolysis had set into the motor because the car just had not been driven. Uh, right from you, it's done very little miles. It now has a total of about 35,000 miles on the clock. Original? Uh, original yeah. as far as I know. Wow. And this is the V12, side valve V12 engine? Side valve V12. It's uh, the Lincoln, uh, 414 cubic inch, 46.8 horsepower. And it's a pleasant car to drive on the open road. Uh, as far as city driving in that goes, it's a mongrel of a thing to see out of. And it's also very heavy to drive at slow range. Yep. How do you go getting parts for this car, being such a rare vehicle? Uh, well, when I bought the car, it was owned by Harold Paynton, who was the uh, author of the James Flood books. And he had been in the Lincoln Car Club of America uh, the Fork and Blade Club, which is the Lincoln Car Club in America, and he had been receiving the monthly journals all that time. And when I bought it off him, he suggested I stay in the club, which I have done. And it's a great club, very similar to the Mason and Rangers Club, and the guys over there are all very helpful. I've had to buy some specific parts, and it's amazing. You can get just about everything. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now this car has a number of features that I guess are unique to it. Yes, um, the gearbox for a start has what they call a free wheel on it. Um, it that's a system where you probably remember when you're riding a push bike, you could pedal up a hill and when you got to the top of the hill you'd just stop pedalling. Well that's how the car operates. You get to the top of the hill, take your foot off the accelerator and it rolls without any engine drag. But being a three-ton car, I don't drive it in that mode at all. Um, other features on it, it's got unique sort of quarter vents on the windows. Um, apart from that, it's pretty just a standard car. But it's, it was an expensive car on its day, and uh, it's a rare car today. And if we compare this to its poorer cousin, the Ford, what does this car have that the Ford doesn't have? Does it have heater, clock, radio, any of those things? We have a clock in it, an electric clock, no heater, Armstrong steering, uh, vacuum cable brakes, which you can use the vacuum as assistance or you can turn that off. 
Um, apart from that, just uh, all leather seats, leather door trims, uh, carpeted. Um, in its day, in 1935, it, you would have had to pay $4,200 for American dollars. A lot of money. And you a lot of money. Ford was probably a quarter of that, or, or less. I think you'd have bought a similar Ford for about five hundred. So we're talking eight, perhaps eight Ford V8s. Yeah. To buy one exactly. Of those. Yeah. yeah. And the six-wheel equipment that looks terrific. Yes. It, it is a very stylish car. And it looks good just sitting, sitting still. Yeah, it, it is. It always catches the eye of people driving up the highway. Well, we have, I've had people hang out of cars and take photographs and do silly things, uh, but it is a very eye-catching car. Yeah, well I noticed at Hanging Rock a couple of weeks ago, you were constantly holding court with people coming and asking you questions about the car. There was always a crowd around it, looking at it, taking photos or asking you questions. Yes, yeah, that, that's true. Um, I, uh, a bit loath sometimes to lift the bonnet because the crowd ends up getting thicker and thicker and I can't get near the car. So I try to leave the bonnet down, unless I see somebody who's really keen and there's not too many around. Well, I'm going to suggest that a lot of people have probably never even heard of or seen a side valve V12 engine. I would say that. Yeah. yeah. And um, a lot of people get it confused with the Lincoln Zephyr. It is a completely different motor. It's a one of it's it's a Lincoln motor. And. Um, it's a one-off, yeah. Okay. Well, Bob, this car's an absolute credit to you. You keep it in beautiful condition. It always looks fabulous and it's shiny and it's clean and everything about it is wonderful. Well, it's a lucky thing. It's been garage ever since I've had it. Just prior to my purchasing it, uh, the previous owner had it painted and uh, it's never been touched since. It's, it's never been restored completely. As I say, it was a bit sad in the motor department when I bought it, but we've got all that running. It's all going great now. So that's just one repaint in its whole life? In its whole life. And trim original or, or retrim? The trim, no, the trim's all original. I put lamb's wool covers on the seats to save them. Um, even the dicky seat in the back is really fine quality leather. Yeah. First registered on the road at Benella, the girl said, how many does it hold? I said, well, two in the front and two in the dicky seat in the back. And she said, yeah, that's why the kids got lost. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. It's a four-passenger car. And does it need seat belts? No. It doesn't need seat belts? No. No. Okay. Try a seat yeah. belt. What sort of speed can you do comfortably in this car? Can you sit at the speed limit? Can you do 100 k's an hour? It can do 100 k's an hour. It's quite happy to sit, sit at 100. I love to do any more than that because it, it's not a very high geared car. It's yeah. low geared and I suppose that's how it was built for the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bob, the car's an absolute credit to you and we are, we are all only custodians because eventually they'll go to someone else, but in your period of custodianship, you've done you've done the car proud, and uh, it's it's always great to see it. And I thank Thanks, you for Graham. bringing it along today. Thank you, Graham. And I wish you many more happy miles in it. Well, I'm sure the car will stand up to that. Yes. All right. Good thank on you, Bob. Thanks very much. Thank you.